Afternoon. For more on the big changes at Big Blue, I want to bring in Jeffrey Sonnenfeld, Yale School of Management Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Studies and a CNBC contributor. Uh, good morning to Jeffrey. You know uh, Ginny well, you know IBM well, uh, and I believe you know the incoming CEO well as, as well. So uh, tell us where you think this company is headed. Thanks. I, I, I do know them. Thanks for that introduction. I should also say, in the interest of full disclosure, um, Ginny's a friend. Uh, and IBM has been one of a couple of dozen companies over the years that has uh, helped sponsor our CEO summits and things. But I do know, Ginny, I know uh, Jim Whitehurst back uh, in the earliest days of, well, he came in later days of, of Red Hat, but I knew his founder, Bob Young, and I've gotten to know Jim when he left Delta, did a fantastic job, CEO of Delta. And Arvin has been coming to the last, suspiciously, to the last few CEO summits at Ginny's <laughs> recommendation. So we can see there's been a succession plan in the works. So I'm glad you kept John on, though. I agree with with... Everything he said, and perhaps the only thing I disagree with so far on the show, uh, was Becky's lead-in, where uh, she read out uh, that this was a tumultuous tenure. This was you know, yeah. a, a successful in, in many dimensions. Um, you take a right, look. Jeff, let me defend that. I didn't, I didn't write that, but I read it, and I will say the stock was down about 23 percent under her tenure at a time when the S&P 500 was up over 150 percent. So if you're looking it, for tumult, it, if you're a shareholder, you may still have some questions about it. It, it was largely flat, Becky, and I know you, you, you read it and didn't write it, but and we can sort of disown it the way Alan Dershowitz disowned his own testimony this week. I, I would uh, say it's but, fair to say tumultuous. Well, look at Jeff why, Bezos. Why is down you know, 27% uh, basically Jeff flat. Bezos, not Joe, basically uh, flat. was my, our, my number one CEO of the decade for right. CNBC. The number two was uh, Bob Iger of Disney. The number three was uh, was uh, was uh, uh, was Ingenui. You could take a look from 20, you know, each one of them had about a, a dozen years of flat stock performance. Amazon, of course, didn't make money for the first 20 years. Uh, Walmart had about a dozen years where the stock was, was flat. And these are the same CEOs. Doug McMillan have done a fantastic job. Uh, Ivan Seidenberg had a very flat period yeah, as Jeff, he was transforming I, I like Verizon. I'm just saying if you're looking over her entire tenure... If you were a yep, shareholder, look at the you guys. might have some questions hold this, about it. Now, hold maybe this. things have been set I'm, up for the future. We don't know, but I'm I think saying, it's very fair have to same, point out. The same standard for the guys. We've had 60 women lead Fortune 500s in the last half century. We've had about uh, 8,000 guys Jenny lead Fortune 500s. may have been handed a much worse scenario than other people who have been handed in the past. Right. I, that could be we absolutely about, fair. No, think, we talked about that at the top, too. But, I, look... You pointed out that Amazon didn't we make money for forever, but Jeff Bezos is still there as, as the stock is and and the market cap is costing that, that a trillion was, that, dollars. That's not, and that, that's not that's apples exactly, to apples at all. Right, right. Th that, that's exactly my point. Uh, Indra is here transforming. Uh, uh, I, uh, at PepsiCo, it took a while for Ingenuity, but it, it soared. Same with Bob Iger. You know, he, he had a much longer reign here. So she's been in office eight years. The right. average CEO has been in office five years. Uh, so she's done well. Uh, the transformations, you take a look at 25 percent of their revenues are now coming in from the cloud. That's pretty remarkable. In fact, overall, 90 percent of this company, a lot of people have considered heavy metal, uh, which is what Carly Fiorina was starting to do to, to HP and to destroy it, is that 90 percent of this company is now uh, 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 services and software. Only 10 percent of it is devices. Uh, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. She's, uh, she's led on, on, on transformation. She's done well. I think on terms of uh, transforming the values, of course, she's been a leader in responsible uses of information, uh, transforming uh, the, the knowledge worker, sort of the, the new-collar worker she has talked about in terms of massive uh, investments in, in training and technology, uh, training for new skills, but also in terms of women. Uh, Bridget von Kralinger leads their blockchain business. Uh, in the blockchain world, it's a, it's, it is dominated by the bro culture. I don't know, there are 10, 12 percent of blockchain executives that are women. Here at, at IBM, you go down layer after layer, it's, it's led by women engineers, uh, uh, IBM fellows. These are people who get the Nobel Prizes. It's an extraordinary change. So I think it's, it's remarkable on that front. I just don't know if we use the same standards for the guys that we use for the women. Uh, look, I think I, Arvin I, is I a like great Jenny choice. I too, but... Jeff, but I think tumultuous is a perfectly fine way of describing it, especially if you Would were sitting you as a shareholder. Would you use that for Doug McMillan at, at Walmart for a dozen years well, or for Doug Ivan Seidenberg? Uh, right uh, now got his, his stock up pretty sharply. So, uh, yeah, I, I think longer, you can say it was a tumultuous the, period because of look what with happened. With a longer with tenure, the stock's up 25 percent just this year. Just, you know, 2019. So All it's right, now Jeff, in the upswing. Just like John Fort was saying 
about Balmer. Balmer blew it on something. Nokia was not a good deal. It cost them it was a $7 billion disaster purchase. Uh, this Red Hat at $32 billion, for, it's clearly going to be a home run for them. And it's only been two quarters that they've been integrating uh, Red Hat into the business. This is going to be, and, and Arvin led that purchase and integration just much the way we look at Satya and Nadella building on some of Balmer's successes. Again, not everything he did at Microsoft was a success, but as we just heard from the HPE CEO earlier today, they, they applaud what, what Jenny's done here at, a, at the competitor. It just takes a little... Joshua, you know, if you look biblically, Moses uh, got to see the promised land, but he didn't actually get to go there. Uh, the Joshua, it's that sometimes the leader has the vision where we're going, but doesn't quite have the time to get there. Yeah. And Mulcahy needed a few more years at Xerox, but she pulled off an incredible transformation of a company we thought was so dead Jeff, in the why, water. So, Jeff, why leave now? I mean, Jenny could stay. She's young. Uh, she could say she's 62. Candidly, just between us, I think her original plan was to stay to 65. And I think with this integration of Red Hat in there, they realized somebody like Arvin, who has been leading research, uh, thousands and thousands of engineers and the rest, much the way Satya Medella, to bring a genuine technologist in this space, it's the right thing to do at this life stage of the business to make sure they do it right. But he's not changing the plans. He's not tearing up her strategy, as we'll see this unfold. He's going to be the right guy to execute this. And the same with, 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 with Jim Eichhorst. He's the perfect guy, uh, actually, uh, for what he's done in transforming Red Hat. I think there's a, a strong future and okay. senior leadership in his company, too. And this is Jeffrey. It's an ideal team.